Acorns just came out with an entirely new group of investments and I'm switching. Today we'll talk about what these investments are, what they mean, and if it's the right choice for you to switch. This new type of investment that's being offered by Acorns is part of this overall structure of things called ESG. And they're not the first ones to do it, they won't be the last. So what does ESG mean? It stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. And what that really means is that you're choosing to only invest in companies that have proven to really care about those three things. Environmental relates to how well a company does in regards to things like animal welfare, CO2 emissions, and renewable energy. Social is about how well a company does with social responsibility, supporting local communities, and data security. Governance relates to how well a company does in things like anti-corruption, having a diverse board of directors, and ethics. It goes beyond those examples, but that's kind of what those three different things mean. So the next question to ask is really like, who decides this? Who says whether or not you care about those things or whether you care about them enough? And what does it mean to sort of qualify as one of these companies? The company that decides what is or isn't eligible to be a part of an ESG investing fund is called MSCI. And they do a lot of research with over 200 analysts. And basically they analyze a whole bunch of different factors that go into whether or not a company can qualify for an ESG rating. So they get all this tons and tons of data, they boil it down and they say, oh, you wanna know about ESG companies? Oh, well, here you go. We've given them a rating from essentially really bad to really good. And if you wanna invest in these really good companies, here are some funds that sort of pick them. And MSCI gives a rating to each company based on how well or how poorly they do with these ESG factors. They do a lot more research and other things than just ESG stuff, but that means that they have a lot of information to base their decision off of. Based on the specific kind of business you run, MSCI measures whether or not you're planning and responding to those three areas well, environmental, social, and governance. If you by nature have a cleaner or more ethical kind of business to start with, then you won't have to take as much action as a business that historically has been like corrupt or hasn't taken care of animals well or other things like that. It's sort of like whenever I was 19 and I could just eat like endless quantities of whatever I wanted and still have six pack abs. And now that I'm 34 and my like exercise and nutritional habits have become questionable, plus my metabolism has slowed down, it means I have to do a lot more work to make up for the deficiencies that I now have. The worse your starting place is, the more work you have to do basically. And it seems like a fair system because this way everyone kind of has an equal shot at getting a good rating. So with these particular factors in mind, does that mean that you can only really invest in like a few select companies and even then are those companies making a lot less money in which case you would make less money on your investing is it worth even considering those things and who can meet these requirements anyway is it like small town like who are these companies that are able to do this well surprisingly there are a lot of familiar names that make the cut Apple Microsoft Tesla Home Depot, Williams Sonoma, that's just a few. These are names that I recognize and there's obviously a lot that I don't, but what it tells me is there's actually some big name companies in there that make the cut. And remember, they don't have to be perfect. Just because there's a standard here doesn't mean that they have to be without blemish because some of these companies, as you find out, will definitely have blemishes, but it's overall meeting enough of the ratings and enough of the ways and mitigating the risks enough to make it through the checklist essentially. And as any investment goes, past performance isn't any kind of guarantee of future performance performance. So even if you look back in time and say, how is this ESG fund done? Or how is this particular company done? It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to keep doing that well in the future. It, it just doesn't work like that. But Acorn says what the goal is with their overall kind of ESG version of investing, if you want to go into that, is to be able to support these companies that have these standards and get a similar return to companies that don't have these standards. Speaking of Acorns in particular, let's break down what these new portfolios look like. If you've seen my previous videos about Acorns, you know that I personally choose the aggressive portfolio. And what that means for Acorns is every dollar you send in, 55% of it will go towards large company stocks in this ETF called ESGU. 10% goes to large and mid cap US stocks, which is just a different mix of companies. 5% goes to small companies. 22% goes to international and 8% goes to emerging market. And all of those are funds that a company has to meet these ESG ratings to even be in there. So the way Acorns differentiates this from their other ones that were formerly the only only ones is calling the old ones core and the new ones ESG. So as you can see here on the screen, I'll put up the kind of different makeup of each of these. And I think the goal is to sort
sort of mimic the same ish, the same kind of breakdown overall of the portfolio, but just to give you these ESG options in case you care about that stuff. One thing I did notice within the Acorns app that I thought was interesting is in the core portfolios, you actually have an option of choosing conservative as a starting place. Like that's the most conservative option, but on the ESG portfolio, you don't have a strictly conservative option. The, the least risky you can get is moderately conservative. So for whatever reason, maybe there aren't that many ESG like bond funds out there, or there aren't that many like very risk averse ESG options enough for them to put together a fund. I don't know, for whatever reason, if you were previously on the conservative setting and you wanna to go towards ESG, just know you've gotta take a little bump up in risk and go up to moderately conservative. Then the rest of the portfolios are described in a similar way. You go from moderately conservative to moderate to moderately aggressive, which is, sounds like a family get together to me, moderately aggressive, and then finally aggressive. So the next question you might have is, is this right for me? And I can't tell you what to do with your own money. That's gonna be your choice. And this is not financial advice. For us, we were already involved in a little bit of a Vanguard ESG fund that we use for my wife's IRA. So I was already kind of familiar with the concept. And personally, I like it. I like the flavor of where these companies are going and what it means to be part of an ESG fund. And as much as I'd like to completely maximize our return, make as much money as possible, I would have mixed feelings if I found out that a bunch of that had come from companies that had either done unsavory things or mistreated people or were involved in industries that were like by nature kind of bad for a culture, bad for a group of people or something like that. And I have to ask myself, do I want to be making money off of those kind of activities? And do I want to be funding those companies so they can continue to do that? More importantly, if I can make a similar or the same return and have companies that are actually caring about those things and taking steps to mitigate those risks and sort of take care of people better, take care of the environment better, why not? Why not get the same thing, but in a cleaner fashion? I'm not a big fan of corruption. I can I can go without corruption to make my 10 or 12% return. So with that logic in mind, we switched over our entire Acorns portfolio to their new ESG theme. It's kind of funny that they call it a theme, but it is uh, self-described as the ESG theme for whatever reason in their app. And like I said, this is for entertainment purposes only, but if you feel similarly, or if you're interested, go ahead and check it out in the Acorns app and see what that could look like for you. I've left a link in the description for you that takes you straight to their website, so you don't have to try and fumble through the app, or if you're not using Acorns yet, you don't have to like download the app to see it. You can click on this link and it gives you kind of a breakdown, like I've done, over what this means, what the investments are, and how the ratings come about, and all that stuff. And if you're new to investing, or Acorns in general, I've made a couple other videos about it that I'll link here at the very end end of the video so you can check those out. But I really like Acorns for any new investor or anybody who wants a kind of set it and forget it investing approach. I think the app is incredibly easy to use. It encourages good habits. It doesn't treat investing like a casino where you just go gamble and throw money around and just hope it works because it's a meme stock like YOLO to the moon, woo, yeah. I think it's actually creating really good habits in people and I've loved using it for the past, gosh, what's it been now, year and a half or so? We've gotten decent returns from it, but more than anything, it's helped us to invest more money, which is ultimately the biggest factor in wealth building. Are you investing more? Are you paying off debt? That's gonna move the needle more than trendy stock. So if you wanna get started, make sure and check out the link in the description, because if you sign up with my link, then we both get five bucks. So I'd appreciate that. It would support the channel a lot, along with the like button. If you got any value from this video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, then go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. I do recommend one thing though. Don't turn on your notifications. You've got enough notifications going on. It, life is distracting enough. You don't need any other buzzing from me or YouTube or any other thing on your phone. So keep those turned off. If this video created deep hatred in your heart, go ahead and double tap that dislike button and leave me a comment about how I'm terribly wrong and ESG funds will be the end of the stock market as we know it. Just kidding. I prefer positive comments, but you're, you're able to be open here. Say what you want. <laughs> If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.